Hey everybody and welcome to the 2018 End of the Trail Classic brought to you by In Flight Disc Golf. I'm Lake Terrell and I'm here with my good friend Andy Parkinson. Say what's up Andy. Hey guys, uh, thanks for joining us. Um, this is a DGA Steady Ed series event, also a Sencal series event. Um, like to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, another big sponsor we have is Jeff Castle at Fresno Flight Center. Uh, check him out online, FresnoFlightCenter.com. Uh, he runs a, a lot of big events. Uh, he has a SenCal event coming up called the Hard Pan uh, here in Fresno. Check it out. It's going to go to help the Parkinson's research. Um, yeah, so let's get started. Who do we got on the card today? I know we got my boy Austin Spradlin out of Bakersfield. He is a world record holder for distance. He can throw, I think, 10 whole miles um, and he should be throwing some Prodigy Plastic today and we also got some of your teammates on the card. Who are yeah, those guys? that's my buddy uh, Matt Paul down in LA represent Legacy Disc along with uh, Dave Madruga um, from Auburn, California. Uh, another uh, SoCal boy uh, representing Innova, uh, Kyle Ekman and Clint Calvin down in San Diego. Uh, all really good guys and can't wait to see what they do. Starting out here on the Perry Outback. Here, round one, front nine of the End of the Trail Classic. Let's get it started. Hole number one, 555 feet, car four. You got this big tree to contend with on the first shot. So you're gonna see most of the players opting for a big hyzer to get into position somewhere in this general vicinity. And then they're gonna be left with around a 200 foot approach shot that goes across this OB road. And the basket sits uh, just a few feet behind these trees here, making a difficult approach shot. You gotta maybe skip off the road or somehow contend with those trees. Hopefully they don't knock you down into the road. Yeah, and actually we made the wire OB this year. So you saw the flags. Um before the service road. So there's OB left and right. You see the communication tower there on your right. That's where all the 911 calls come into the 559 from Visay, Fresno. Looks like Austin and Matthew both getting in position there. Nothing too crazy. Madruga's going big hyzer and that should be just fine. Yeah, I don't know if any of you remember, there was a big mulberry tree in between that gap. So that basic hyzer wasn't there a year ago. Uh, the drought really took out some of the trees and that really opened up a gap for the right hand back end hyzer, which you see a lot of them taken here. Here's Clint throwing some Prodigy discs. Yeah, and that's really the landing zone as you stay out in the middle. You have probably, he's probably left at 250 feet across the service road. And again, the wires mark the OBs. You can see Madruga just sneaking past the tree and over the wire. Nice shot. Looks like an X1 on a forehand for oh, Austin. Oh, that's got to get. Oh, no, Real Cole close. rejects him. He's going to be taking putt for four on the short side of the road. Yeah. Kyle trying the same uh, sidearm. Looks like he yeah. did cross over safe, but lands out of bounds. Matt Paul has a history of ultimate, so you'll see in his windup he'll do this twist with his disc. Yeah, he's got a little disc. bit of uh, eccentric flare right before he releases it. Yeah, and that came from uh, Ultimate trying to throw off his opponent, and it just became natural for him. So you'll see almost before every throw, that's something he does to just clear his mind. So Clint throwing his approach shot there, he was actually on a little concrete ring of, uh, it's like a circle of concrete, and he took a stroke for that. So he'll be tapping in for a par, I believe. Yep, one of the rules were all concrete is uh, out of bounds. Oh, oh no, Madruga off the up. cage for birdie. Tough break there, but Mavi Paul collects his birdie. Ready to take your time. Looks like Clint will be taking that penalty and collecting his par. 
and a couple tap-ins. Unfortunate bogey for Austin. And a bogey for Kyle. So in years past, we've made that uh, grass the OB. So yeah, that kind of bit a couple players. Hole two, what do we got, Andy? Hole two is playing towards the road. We got OB left. Um, you'll see OB is long and left, really. Um, it's a 350 foot right hand, backhand hyzer around that mulberry or a sidearm. Let's see what they choose to do. I'm gonna guess backhand hyzer. You need something that is gonna go out wide around that mulberry and still high enough to break in left. Yeah, Matthew's a lefty here, though we might see him choose the left gap up the middle. Oh yeah, and he got it. Looks a little tight. Should but he's around the mulberry. Madruga yeah. most likely going outlaw here on the hyzer. That's nice, put him about 20 foot. Yeah, again, you got it high enough to get it around that mulberry and fade left. I and mean, I think Clint Calvin has enough power to do the same thing. Yeah, a little hyzer flip. Taking the D2 and Great parking shot. it. Beautiful. You know, Austin has the power. Yeah, Austin could throw a putter on this shot if he wanted to. He's he's a little bit tight. Yeah, and you'll see that mistake made by a lot of people, especially early in the round. You just haven't stretched, you know, and you got to throw a power shot. Like 400 foot shot. Ekman leaving it wide. He don't want to contend with that mulberry. Yeah. Gets around it. And right on target. No stranger to the end of the trail. I'm sure he's been competing uh, in this tournament and many local tournaments mm -hmm. for lots of years. Yeah, he has been. We saw an Austin overcook one there on his up shot. Matthew for birdie. Mm. Just off the left side. And his putting is really one of his strong points. He is such a great putter. Uh, maybe it's just some early jitters. Austin too, let's see what he's got. He'll be taking a bogey. Mm, looks like he had the right height. And Dave's not going to miss that after, you know, he's probably <clears throat> kicking himself on that first one, but he's not missing this one. He is Kyle. Uh, park job for Kyle. Both such great putters. Kamadu okay, has a nice hard spin putt. Yep. Really good in the wind. You'll see him probably make some really good putts today. A little strong on the bogey putt, Ooh. almost jumps out. Par for Matt Paul, and we've got a race. Two guys at one under par. And going into hole three, what are we looking at, Andy? Okay, hole three is only 231 feet, but you can see the side of this hill is marked off as a bunker. The rule is, if you land out of bounds, off the tee shot, you go directly to the drop zone. The drop zone is going to sit left of the basket, right at the bottom of the, the hill. So you're going to have an upshot going directly at it. So the idea was to let the players go for it. Um, Dave opts not to. So he lays it short, safe, where he's going to have an upshot, uh, an uphill shot for a putt. Looks like he went putter. Clint going mid-range here. That's a layup. Yeah, it's a makeable putt. They're choosing to play it safe and uh, not take that drop zone shot. Looks likely a rock or something of the source for Kyle here. I bet it's his gator. He's had a gator in his bag. That's probably the same gator he's had for okay. 10 years in the bag. A bevy of layups from the card Man, here. Man, so shocking. Not, well, if we... I mean, they're See, going Austin, to the drop zone. Austin's not going to lay this up. You can't do it, little buddy. I don't think he has no, he's that going kind for of it. power to leave that type of control. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you see he landed in the bunker. So you go to the bunker and without a stroke. So he's throwing from two from this drop zone. Interesting to see so many guys lay it up mm -hmm. when you're not being penalized for going to the drop zone. Especially with the banners in the back to block any shots along. Right. 
putters. But the three putters are good putters and probably just wanted a chance. Again, it's early in the round. This is hole three of a three round plus final nine, so. Madruga, a little short, little right. Mm, he was going for it, I guarantee it. And mm. it's hard to get that kind of an uphill putt high enough to actually go in. You see all those guys, every one of them running it, but mm -hmm. no one quite giving it the height yet. Matt Paul did. Yeah, he did. And I wonder if he hit the, the banner. It looks like the banner might have saved him from a roll away behind. That was the idea. We'll have to see. Austin just left side for par. Mm. Bit of a death putt here. Out of the way, Matt Paul. It looks like it did hit that banner and stay in. Really, that can be a scary putt. You're looking at a uh, complete drop off. Oh yeah, it's a long comebacker if you missed that one. That's Austin for bogey. Mm -hmm. Looks like David collecting a par. And Kyle will tap in his par as well. Four pars and a bogey. No harm, no foul for most of the card. And moving on to hole four, 261 foot par three, playing from on top of this um, big hill, down the hill, sitting right in this little grove of trees here. It's not long, but it's not easy to access. Yeah, and the OB you see is path and beyond left, so you'll see a lot of players taking that sidearm, that right hand, backhand sidearm, and just trying to wing it out and break in. Away from the OB. Right before that dead tree there on the left. Ooh. Almost acing it. Nice wow. shot, Dave. Wow, well played. Looks like Clint has the same idea. Little tight came in a little early, but that's going to leave him uh, inside the circle. Kyle throwing the forehand as well. Also looks a little early, but what a good skip. Some ground play, he's inside the circle. A little flick of the wrist. And <laughs> easy <laughs> hyzer for the lefty. Yeah, good play, Matt Paul. <clears throat> Austin's six foot 12, yeah, he's trying to jump to see the basket here. <laughs> You see a lot of putter shots just straight at it, maybe a little leak left to right. Some really nice flicks from the card. Austin with the longest putt for birdie. This looks about 30 feet. Mm -hmm. there you go. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Tough, tough miss there for Clint. Oh wow. No chance. Some cage love for Mr. Ekman. Yeah, you saw Kyle maybe just trying to get through it. It's standard uh, routine putt, Matt Paul. And some nice close tap ins for Madruga, Matt, and Clint collecting the lone par. No, dude, have you met me? <laughs> All right, we got hole number five. This is a 639 foot par four, and it's one of the signature holes out here just because it's so much fun to play. It's sort of the top of the world shot, so to speak. Yeah, and usually uh, when it rains, there's water that fills up in this basin. We didn't get the water this year, so you'll see an OB line there on the left of the fairway that any, and the rule was anything right of the line is OB and proceed to the drop zone. So you'll see a lot of these guys try to air one out high and fade left, uh, leaving them an open 200, 250 foot shot to the pin. So Dave Madruga first up. Yeah, and you really want to keep it high and get it around that giant valley oak there. Right, this isn't one of those top of the world type shots where you need to throw in a downward trajectory. You really want to sort of leave it 
nice and high to allow the fade to take over and move it far enough left so that you're safe. Yeah, I really wanted to create a controlled shot so you just couldn't just rip one. I wanted you to be able to control a shot and have a play as if there was water. There's Kyle. Uh, he oh, flirted right yep. on the line and is just to the right of it. That's going to be out of bounds. <clears throat> Difficult task for the lefty here to Absolutely. move that far left. Looks like... He landed yeah. just in front of the drop zone. He's going to have a, a shot, but he's going to have to contend with that oak tree. Austin throwing a nice control shot mm -hmm. here. Just something straight out there. And really, that flat area is an ideal 200, 250 foot from the pin. Great shot, Austin. Calvin ripping one out high. Oh, got sneaky, found a hole. <clears throat> good, he's in a good spot. That's a good flat, flat footing for a second shot. Matthew able to go big hyzer here. Mm. Out and over the OB, comes back in, absolutely safe. Underneath this tree, Clint going standstill side flick. Uh -oh. Looks a little bit low, a little bit turned over. I think yeah. that's going to be safe. Good. Austin probably with a putter just out there straight. Get it out there about 200 feet. And he's a little short, but inside the circle. Circle's edge, maybe. Yeah. Looks like possibly a P2 or some type of overstable putter mm -hmm. for Kyle. Great shot. Yeah, nicely done. And what do you think Madruga's throwing here? A, a ghost? A, probably a ghost. Yeah, he likes to throw these in from about this range. Mm -hmm. Good shot, a little long. Overcooked it a little bit, but he'll have a putt from Circle's Edge. Looks like Clint was safe. Great line. What is uh, Matt putt with? Is he putting with clutches? I think that he likes the bead. Um, that's either a, a clutch or a, a closer. Okay. Austin, a very solid putter. Nicely done. Mm -hmm. And Madruga from just deep of the basket. Front rim banger. He'll take a par. Very uncharacteristic. Yeah, I do too. Probably shaking off some of them jitters. And Clint taps in for the par. Okay. Now Paul's probably going to just tap in for the par too. Oh no. Disappointing par for Madruga. Hole six, 190 foot. You got OB left. You see a walking path that plays through the hole, uh, that plays as a river. Uh, you want to cross that path and just scoot up to the pin. So a low ceiling approach shot. We're going to see a forehand here from Austin. With a skip. Skip, double skip, a roll. Absolutely and... perfect. Nice. Great shot. Truga looks like he's lining up a turnover here. You really have a low tunnel to get past. You really, it doesn't do it justice, but those oak trees have small branches that really, they're really hanging. That looks like Dave found OB. Absolutely Beautiful. perfect. Nice turnover there from Kyle. Mm -hmm. Another ideal lefty hole for Matt Paul with a skip and... Looks like he's flirting with the walking path there. Yeah, we'll have to see. Looks like Clint's going with the putter just straight at it. Maybe a slight left to right flex. 
Nice late turn. Absolutely ideal. Great shot. Oh yeah. You can see Matt Pauls and Dave Madrugas both landed on that sidewall. Couple of long par looks for these guys. Neither one of them able to cash in there. Oh, the awesome, the can. Nice putt. Yeah, these guys put it close and should all be getting birdies here. Just on the left side for Kyle. There you go, Dave. <clears throat> Find his putter stroke. Clint oh, tap in for his birdie. birdie. Unfortunate bogey for Matt there. Yeah, moving on, hole seven. Uh, you can see the bridge, very recent addition to the Mooney's Grove Park. Uh, this one's special. The path and right is OB. It's gonna play long uh, past the cabin. You see OB left also, uh, separating uh, fairway 17. You wanna go and land on this island. So this is a uh, this is surround an island surrounded by OB. OB is long. So the idea is to stay in the center of the fairway. Austin's gonna find the early tree, but still stay in bounds. <laughs> Barely. And he happy about it. Likes it. it. Yeah, great attitude on this kid. The older he gets, great kid to be around. Yeah, he just gets better and better, and uh, as his skill improves, so does his mental game, so it's fun to watch. Clint taking the high right gap uh, and finding the center of the fairway. Kissing that tree, but still. Kyle's going to choose the same gap over the OB and hoping for a fade left. Oh, catches a late tree there as he's tracking. But stay center cut in the fairway. Drew is going to take more of a straight at it shot. A bit tighter of a gap, but I think with more potential to make the island, it's actually a bit short. Yeah, he's inside of 200 feet from that spot where he landed. Matt Paul is going to do a little flex shot, finds an early tree, but still, he's going to stay in the center of the fairway. No one quite putting for birdie. But Austin with the power to get to the pin and does it nicely, puts himself within 20 feet. Matt Paul with a tricky shot, missing the Boy Scouts cabin. And oh wow! Like you can't, yeah, he jumped off the roof. Yep, you can't see it, but he did. He's oh oh. We're gonna have a, a slow down. Thank you for that. With enough power to uh, come back in bounds. I love jumping off the roof as a kid. You know what? You couldn't have got any luckier than that right there. Long jumper for Clint. Yep, Clint Calvin, which is a couple trees to negotiate around. And not as lucky. Bounces off the Boy Scouts cabin and finds the OB. So he's going to play the last place he was fair. Kyle not wanting any of that. Skips off the OB. Lands probably 25 feet. Dave with the routine jumper runs, for, runs it. Exciting. So Clint's going to take it. Last place he was fair. And this is about 35, 30. And tapping in is uh, four. Yep. That's not a tapping. That's a, a tough putt. Great putt. Plenty of power. Almost squeaks off the back. It but. does. Yeah, he's got that spin putt that's super powerful. Uh, and it's accurate. When he's on, he's on. Kyle, too. And the day in the office. Austin, almost too, too much power. Uh, second time, let's count them. <laughs> Finding that center pole. Uh, I think these are Mach 3s. Yeah, it looks like Mach 3s. I think Mach 3s that we've had for... Uh, the course was installed in 2006. Nice and broken in. You put yeah. a, a nice, powerful spin putt on there. That's easy to find the pole and uh, sometimes get kicked out. They're great baskets, but yeah, that tough, that, that strong putt, dead at the pole, mm -hmm. can spell trouble. So this one... 
is a, uh, a fun hole. We've actually made the creek. Uh, there's a double mando between those trees. Off the tee, it, you need to land left of the creek. So if you are right on the, of the creek, off the tee, you're OB. Uh, and you go to the drop zone, not a friendly drop zone. So you have to land inside of that flagged area off the tee. And really that's for speed of play. I didn't want people to land on the right side like that. I don't want... Oh, oh, oh. And you'll see Austin Spradling, he has the power. Oh, <laughs> and he shows you right there. Ooh, ooh. You can get through any yes. tree, apparently. I tell you what, I've known him since he was knee-high to a grasshopper, and he has just really grown into his size. And does he, does he stop growing? No, not yet. And Kyle says, you know what? I can do that. I'm strong, too. Wow. Flirting with that OB also... Dave's like, okay, we're just gonna take a uh, a ghost and throw a ghost out there. Could have been a pursuit. Yeah, that could have been a pursuit. This is uh, back in the early stages of the pursuit. Matt Paul with a little flex. Also super tough lefty hole. Finds the OB. Not what you want, Matt. Almost skidded, almost got safe on the yeah. grass there, but not quite lucky mm. enough. Clint saw the same thing. Uh, does he have enough power to cross? Yes, he does. Okay. Safe in the center, cut of the fairway. He's not gonna be happy with that, but he should be. Matt Paul from the drop zone. This is actually an old tee pad that we don't tee from anymore. We use it as a drop zone. So you see Matt Paul is just fighting his way up the fairway. That's three from the tee. That's throwing five from there. Clint throwing two, runs it a little short. Drew also throwing two. Catching a bit of the ceiling there. Mm -hmm. Staying safe. Austin would love to capitalize oh. on this lucky shot that got across here. You saw it in his eyes. He had the power. <laughs> Try Austin. So good. And for the solo birdie. Yeah, no doubt. Wow. Kyle is such a in. good putter. Clean up for par there from Clint. Yeah, happy to have it. Tough hole for Matt here. He's going to cash yeah. in the double bogey. Hey. Good par from David. Again, the drop zone is so unforgiving. Mm. Oh. Some putting troubles there. Looks like it was in and then out, and that's going to be a bogey for Austin. Not happy. And on to hole number nine. 685 foot, par four, and uh, this one is all about getting in position and giving yourself a clean look to get up and down for hopefully what would be a birdie. Yeah, definitely about your second shot here. So you see the OB path right, uh, road left, is OB. The idea is to get it past this row of trees to give yourself a shot to the pin. This is definitely a two-part hole. Um, if you're anywhere around that bench, you'll have probably 270 left to the, to the pin that's completely guarded. Uh, left or right of the pin, uh, there's a gap for a sidearm or a right hand backhand for your second shot. So let's see what these guys choose to do. A roller. Ideal shot. Uh, get it down and just... Let it get out there and move right. Mm-hmm. A oh. little bit of a late tree, but that shouldn't be terrible position for Kyle. No, he's not happy. That would have had another 50, 75 feet, but still put him in a good spot for uh, look. Oh, David also going for the roller. Looking a little early. A little cut to the right, but... Get sneaky. Finds a hole if he can stay off that path. Yeah, he'll have a good shot over that bench we were looking at earlier. Looks like uh, Clint's lining up a roller. Mm, that's the mistake you don't want to make is to hit that early bench. Yeah, it's going to cut off a lot of distance, a lot of angle, and completely eliminate birdie from the equation almost. However, it saved him from going onto that OB walk path there on the, on the right. And 
Pretty mm-hmm. ideal there from Austin. You can see Austin going over the A-hole position. Come Matt on. Paul. It's actually Matt oh, Paul yeah, lined up just a backhand. Right. Just stay in the middle. And this shook after that double bogey. Doesn't want to take another one. Matt not able to really access the roller like these right-handed players. Clint with the right idea, lays down a second roller, such a low ceiling, can really eat up a lot of distance. He's put himself probably a hundred feet away from the pin. Should be able to get up and down from par for, from there. Matt with a little early release, finds himself also within uh, 80, 100 foot away. Madruga looking to approach with the hyzer. Now there's that open hyzer shot and he left it, uh, pure the gap, left it a little bit short. He's gonna have probably 25, 30 foot from, for the bird. Kyle's choosing the high route. He wants that to go way left. He caught some early cabbage that probably, you know, cut him off from what could have been a park job there. Mm, definitely in his wheelhouse. Uh, Junior left it a little bit wide. He's gonna have the same putt. Nice yeah. approach there. And that's really all you can do. Such a low window. That's gonna be saying the same thing, give it a run. The last guardian tree, he's probably 25 out as well. Ooh. This is Kyle for birdie. Little meat on the bone outside the circle leaves it a little left. First tester of the round for Kyle, no? Good position to get the birdie here is Austin. Oh yeah, you could tell. Junior wants it. Now I've known this kid since again. He was knee high to a grasshopper, okay? And he's always had the power. His dad's got him into the game young. Clint. Calvin showing you he's got the power on the spin putts. Yeah, Madruga's not gonna leave another one short. Good putt, Madruga first. Birdie three. Kyle getting the par. <laughs> and looks like that's gonna be good enough to leave Kyle with a one stroke lead heading into the back nine here as we've got a three down, a two down, a one down. So. A tight race after the first nine holes. Yep. And the back nine doesn't get any easier, so. No, and then you'll really see, uh, you wanna just stay away from the bogeys. Uh, I'm Andy Parkinson with Lake Terrell on the front nine of the end of the trail. Join us for the second half of the 2018 end of the trail classic. Thank you, in-flight video for filming. See you soon.